Hey guys, Greg here at Let's Solve Reverse Linked List, Lead Code 206. It's basically the canonical first linked list question you should ever do. So given the head of a singly linked list, we want to reverse the list and return it. And that means return the new head. So say we were given the list of one, two, three, four, five. We need to reverse it, which means basically flip around all those arrows and return the new head. So the new head is gonna be five and completely reversed. It's five points to four, points to three, and and so on. And by the way, this notation from leak code often confuses people. This is not saying that head is actually like a list or an array. It's a way of kind of quickly representing at a high level that this is what the list looks like and this is what you'd output. So you'd want to return the five node, which is the new head. Okay, so I should note there's actually two ways to cover this, and that's generally always true for linked list problems, is that there is usually a recursive solution because they are a recursive data structure, and there is also an iterative solution. And a lot of people get confused by the word iterative because people don't actually say it that much, but really you can just treat it as not using recursion, as in not creating a function that calls itself. Now in this video, we're going to cover the iterative solution because that's the one you'd want to cover in the interview. However, there is definitely a recursive solution and I'd encourage you to try and figure that out afterwards. Okay, so the solution goes like this. We're going to use two pointers and people immediately are gonna get mad at me for saying pointers. Variables are basically pointers and this precisely shows why. So we're gonna use two pointers. We'll have a pointer cur, I'm just gonna call it C. So we have pointer C that's going to point to our current head and we'll also get another variable prev, which is basically going to point right behind it. And right behind it is currently nothing. So this is actually just in Python, you'd call it none or JavaScript, it's null or whatever you want to call it there. It's nothing. So prev is always going to stay one step behind cur, and they are going to kind of move over like this. So if you wanted to write this in code, which I often encourage you to, we'd set cur equal to the head and we would set prev equal to none or basically null. Okay, so let's just have this over here and let's build up our code. This is definitely the best way to tackle linked list problems is to draw it out like this and kind of build up your code. So we have our initialization and then what do we want to do? Well, we really want to flip this around. We want it so that five is actually pointing to nothing. Why do we want that? Well, remember, we actually want it looking like this. And so really we want five pointing to nothing. Well, that's great because prev is already pointing to nothing. So we can just set cur.next over to prev and we are going to lose this connection. Uh Oh, well, that's a problem because we've already lost this whole list here. So that's not quite right. We are going to do that in a moment, but before we set cur.next, we actually want a temporary. We want a temporary T. This is going to be pretty common because you don't want to lose the list ever. So we set a temporary T to be what? Well, that is just cur.next. So over here, I'm going to write some code that is basically the stuff that'll run in a loop. We'll worry about the loop conditions later, but we know we're going to keep doing T is equal to cur.next here. And over here, I'm writing them in one letters. Here, I'm writing them in the full letters, but we don't actually really need this that's just our initialization so in our loop we want to set c to cur.next which precisely does this right here so now we at least have the list over here so we're not going to lose that then from here we want to flip around this connection so we draw this that is precisely c.next we are setting that equal to prev or p and so that draws the left connection it also removes that connection and then we really just want to keep this up so we want to keep prev one step behind cur and we want to to move cur over. So we set prev to be cur. So let me find room for that here. We are going to set prev, that's just p equal to cur, p equal to c, and then we are going to get c equal to t. So then we do c equals t. We can kind of forget the fact that we have t, and really what this means here is that p is pointing here and c is pointing here. That is great shape because we can do the same thing again. We just really follow the code over here that we've already written out. Step one here t is equal to c.next. Okay, we can do that. t is c.next. c.next is equal to p. Okay, we can do that. c.next is equal to p. That draws that connection and removes that connection. Then we can do these two, p is equal to c. Okay, so we point this at what c is pointing to and we point c equal to t, which is right there. We can kind of forget about the fact that we have t and these are all in the right spot and we've done all of these operations. 
Okay, so I'm not going to really mark it with an X over here because we're just gonna keep doing the same things, but I will quickly draw it out. We have T marks over here. We can reverse our connection by saying C dot next is equal to P. We can move these over like we did before and forget about the fact that we have T. We need to do this a couple more times. We again get T is pointing over here. We reverse our connection. So C dot next is equal to P. We move them over. And here, this is the last time that we're gonna do this. I'm just gonna move my code over here now. So we have C pointing to what we want as the new head because ultimately this is what we want to return. But when we do this, we'll have T is C dot next. Well, that's fine. But now T is going to point into nothing. Again, that's just none or null or whatever you want there. So T points to nothing. We can still do our reverse. So we'll point this backwards and then we will move these over. That points C to be nothing and P to be the new head. So this works out really well. You can actually run this while cur. So this is just while C here. That means while C is actually a node. So while it's a node, we are going to do this stuff. And then as soon as this breaks, that is when C goes out of bounds, basically, when it's none or null. Well, P is exactly the node that we want to return. That is the head. And so after you do this loop here, we can actually just return prev. That is exactly the node that we want. Okay, so let's write our code and it's literally just the code we had there. That's why you should always solve it like that. So we have cur is equal to the head. We have prev starts at none. We will do our loop while we have cur. So while cur is a valid node and not none, we will get our temporary T. I'll just call it temp. That is equal to cur.next. So we don't lose the list. We'll set cur.next equal to prev. That is what is going to flip this around. And we move them over. So we set prev equal to cur and cur is going to go over to the temporary. After that, we know when cur goes out of bounds, prev is always going to point to the head, and so we want to return prev. That is fully correct. It is literally the code that we wrote in the visualization. If we were to submit that, that will work. Okay, so let's think about the complexity of this. Now, time complexity for linked lists is almost always the same. You're probably gonna have to go through the list, and that's really just what we do. It is going to be big O of n, where n is the length of the linked list. We really just run this while we have current, with current starting at the head. It's always going to take one step at a time, so the time complexity of this is definitely big O of n. And the reason that the iterative solution, which is the one we wrote, there's no recursive code here at all, that is actually going to be a space complexity of O of one. Because as you can see here, we're really just storing some pointers. Yes, I'm calling them pointers, they really are. And we are not really storing any array values or anything. Now, the reason that this is better than the recursive solution, which if you were to write, I'm not gonna show it, but if you were to write one, it would end up being O of n because the recursive call stack actually ends up being the length of the list as well. So that's why we're showing this solution. It's more elegant and it's actually a lot better on the space. This is the best solution you can have and it's insanely elegant. Drop a like if this was helpful and have a great day guys. Bye-bye.